everybody out there, my name is Dragonus. This is going to be a little bit of a rant for me today. Um, there isn't a lot of games coming out today, I'm going to be honest with you. I know The Witcher 3 just came out. I don't do those huge games that come out. I focus on indie titles, mostly on the channel, and mid-level titles. I will hit an occasional big title when it comes down to it, but The Witcher never, 3 never really appeal to me in terms of doing it for the channel nor does it is a game that series that i really get into i i, I don't know what it is uh i want to give it another chance but one of these days maybe i'll do it but um just not for now and then all the other games that are coming out i think a lot of people avoided launching a game on this day considering witcher 3 but i want to talk to you guys about customer service in the in the, in the video game industry because if there's anything that the industry really needs to take a look at very quickly, in my mind, because there's been talks about video game crash, there's been talks about issues with regarding the industry, and they're all over the place. I mean, there, there is, you know, the quality control aspect of it, you know, over, over, overinflated budgets regarding games, you know, the idea of DLC content. But I think one of the, the, the basic factors regarding the industry that is really troubling in my mind right now is the customer service aspect and i want to talk to you guys about that because of a recent incident um that i wrote about over at tech raptor uh, for those of you who d don't watch the channel or don't know about it um i do weekly content over at tech raptor as well as write some articles for them i usually do Lately, I've been doing opinion pieces for them in terms of um, some of the stuff that we regarding in the industry. I did a Polygon, um, Brian Corrente response regarding Nintendo's future. But I wrote an article on Sunday regarding Dark Void. Uh, for those who don't know, Dark Void is a game that came out in 2012 and is published by Capcom. It wasn't very critically re well received. Um, it had some aspects to it that were interesting. Yahtzee did a really good video regarding Dark Void where he broke down the idea of, okay, there was an interesting factor to it. And I think part of the, the draw there is like, okay, if it has an interesting factor to it, if a game has a feature that maybe it fails on some other aspects of it, but it's got one interesting feature to it, that maybe it's worth taking a look when the price drops. And of course, Capcom had a sale this weekend. Um, it was like 80% off, it was two bucks. And so it's like, okay, a lot of people took a look at that. Some people looked at it without looking at the user reviews. And the thing is, is that that's where the problem started. Um, now, Dark Void uses a third-party DRM system called Secure ROM. Uh, Secure ROM basically is a digital rights management service. Basically, it sort of controls the keys and, the, and an activation code. Well, most of the people who have bought, if not all, um, people who have bought Dark Void recently or lately have run into an issue. They can't play the game. Yeah, that's right. You, you purchase the game on Steam, you go to play it, and you can't play it. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's mostly to do with the fact that your serial number is invalid, despite the fact that you bought it off of Steam. Now, in my due diligence with the article, I wrote to three people. I wrote to the Capcom PR, I wrote down to Secure ROMs, uh, customer support section, and I wrote to Valve. Um, a day went by, absolutely no response from many of them. All right, it's a Sunday, I understand that, but Monday, you should have responded. Well, finally, last night, um, like very late, late in the night, Secure Rom responded to my support, my question, asking for a, resp a press response, asking for, you know, if they're aware of the situation. Basically, they dodged the question regarding everyone and said, oh, what do you need, what, or, you know, give me your serial number, give me your activation code, and we'll take a look at it. That is abysmal, first of all. The fact of the matter is, is it took two days almost for the company to respond in question on that, on that game. Now, I understand that there are a hundred million people out there, and I understand that there are levels of customer support that are needed but the fact of the matter is is that it took you two days to respond to a pretty significant request it wasn't about performance it wasn't about you know a question that could maybe be delayed because you know it's you know a question about you know modding or something for example no it's a question about getting your game to actually work get your product actually work it took you two days to respond to that that's abysmal that is unbelievably abysmal and the fact that you dodge the question is even more abysmal now, I will give Secure ROM this. They've actually responded. Capcom and Valve have not. Um, I know TechRaptor's not a huge site. I know it's not, you know, the, an IGN or Polygon or 
Kotaku. Um, I think they make better content than most of them right now in terms of the quality of articles and the detail regarding it. But it's sad to me that, that game, a game is being sold in a broken state and the customer has no idea about it. Now, I've talked about this before. I talked about Ultra Street Fighter 4 and its problems regarding networking at, since the changeover from Games from Windows Live. How the game was being sold, Capcom would sort of appear when the game was being sold saying, okay, okay, you know, we're taking a look at it, and then disappear for a while. If anything is going to cause a video game crash, you know, people have talked about it, overhyped budgets, you know, everything like that. It's going to be that. It's the fact that the consumer is not being listened to. The consumer drives a business. I mean, it, that's what consumerism is. That's that's exactly why you go to a company for it. And if you don't listen to them, it's going to come back to bite you. Um, I think Ubisoft has shown that immensely right now. Their customer support, I mean, not customer support, um, their sort of outlook and the next you know future for their games is completely abysmal because everyone's sick of their shit right now with the watchdog situation with assassin's creed unity you know seeing the comments on assassin's creed syndicate i mean it's obvious that people are burned people are like you know well, why would i want to buy this why would i need to take a look at this um and for good reason now even ea who has got a bad bad industry rep has actually repaired themselves a little bit because people are like well you know they've sucked a lot but at least origin's getting better in terms of customer support meanwhile you've got valve who customer support is abysmal trying to get things you know re responded from valve right now is just plain ridiculous and even the owner game newell has you know basically said yeah you know we need to reprove that but they haven't really done anything at this point in terms of something significant if anything is going to cause a problem in the industry, it's that. The consumer wants to be heard, and in particular, I think that's a major problem with what the gaming industry, Gamergate, for example, have. The fact that they feel like their voices, even though they're talking, are not being heard or being completely ignored. And it's a problem because sooner or later, that does come back to bite you. And it really comes back to really hurt you. Now. Part of the reason why I like covering indies in particular on this channel, not only because you know they need it's, there are good games out there that need to be promoted, is the fact that they're very responsive most of the time to people. Um, I mean, you, you look at games like you know Shovel Knight and Yacht Club Games. You talk about you know some of the indies that are in early access, like Jump Jet Rex, that, that came out of early access recently, where they were you know interacting with people and talking with the industry, uh, talking with consumers, and obviously listening to people who obviously wanted to play their games and wanted to help the games and actually listening and saying, hey, okay, here's what it is. We've seen successes on Kickstarter recently with games that have been told to us by the industry that it wouldn't succeed. Konami has ta talked about Castlevania just not having the sales and not being worth looking at it, and yet Bloodstain has a huge Kickstarter campaign. Uh, same thing with Mighty Number no. 9, same thing with Yulele, um, the Banjo-Kazooie spiritual successor. Um, there's a lot of out-of-touchness with the mainstream gaming element and the, the what I think is the core of their gaming base right now. Um, the gaming base has been shifting for a while now, though. We've, with the rise of mobile, you're seeing a lot more casual gaming. Um, you're seeing a lot more, um, actually, a lot more women are getting into gaming because of the casual gaming portion. And not, I mean, look at statistics. I mean, I'm not just, you know, putting that out there for, you know, for just uh, like a regular statement. There's statistics to back that up. 52% of gamers, including the mobile gaming market, I believe, is um, women now. Um, that may be 54. I don't remember if it's 52 or 54. But <clears throat> beyond that, um, the fact of the matter is you have a huge consumer base that's really feeling like they're not being listened to. And I don't know where that's coming from. I mean, let's think about that. What business doesn't listen to its consumer and succeeds over a period of time? Um without some other element, you know, coming into play there, whether it be lack of competition, whether it be um, 
I mean, look at some of the worst customer service industries uh, right now. Cable and internet right now is doing horrible in terms of like, you know, there's Comcast. Comcast gets berated every day for their customer service and their customer service is awful. And why is that? Because there's less competition. There's no competition there. And even that even applies to the video game industry. Think about Valve and think about their customer support and how shitty it is right now. Well, they're the majority owner in Steam, and I mean majority in Steam. They're the majority owner in digital distribution on the PC. There are ones that are copping up, you know, uh, GOG, you know, even Origins coming a little bit along, but they are the majority, and yet their customer service is awful. I mean, ridiculously awful. Um, to the point where even their own CEO is like, yeah, we got to fix this. Um, that's what scares me right now. If anything's going to really screw up the industry, it's that. And the way to fix that is, is you know, you got you to gotta listen at this point. Now, again, listening and, 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 and giving in is, is are two different things. There are a lot that consumers ask for that are ridiculous in nature in terms of, you know, prices, in terms of, you know, not understanding what it takes to make a, you know, a triple A game. Now, budgets are over, overdone at this point. Um, there's a lot more put in the marketing now that maybe it doesn't need. And the graphical fidelity at times, even though people love graphical fidelity at times, sometimes the fact is, is that maybe you should spend that and get money a little bit more on gameplay. Um, and ideas rather than anything else. You know, if I think about the games that really stood out to me over the last several years in terms of some of the quality experiences that I've had, you know, there are games that, you know, are, graphic, are graphically d w d well done that I can say, yeah, they were good games. And The Last of Us was a good game. You know, Bandetta 2 was a great game. Um, Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, great game. But when I think about the ones that really like stuck with me and the ones that I keep on playing, I mean, I'm still playing TF2 after all this time. I'm still wanting to play Darkest Dungeon. I put myself off on Darkest Dungeon because I really want to sort of savor it at this point once it fully releases. But it's amazing how gameplay makes a huge difference and yet we spend so much time talking about graphics, so much time about it, that people forget that, you know, why are you there? You're playing a game. If you wanted the... the greatest graphical fidelity and things like that you could be watching a movie you could be w doing things like that yeah gameplay really helps and it's awesome when it is graphically intensive and graphically you know there but a good game is a good game and if you're gonna sacrifice i mean i i keep on going back to this example assassin's creed unity one of the cathedrals in this assassin's creed unity took a year to render in terms of design, in terms of all the elements on it. it. When you look at it, it looks fantastic. It's one goddamn cathedral in an entire game. Maybe that effort was better used elsewhere because you spent an entire year's salary, probably 60,000 to 90,000 on w one cathedral in the game. When that could have been used on gameplay elements or, or other art assets, at that point obviously an artist is going to be a little bit different from a programmer side but maybe maybe you hire one less artist and maybe you hire a um another programmer or game designer and it is scary to think that the industry has come so far in some ways but not in others i mean in particular the customer service side you know I think the industry is actually starting to catch up on that portion because even with like older games, even like in the old NES and Super NES games, you know, customer service wasn't exactly great there either. But I could understand it was it was it was a starting industry. You know, there wasn't a lot of competition at times. Um, the NES and the Genesis, you know, the, you didn't really have a lot of choices. But now you've got shits all over the choices. If I, if if you know, Capcom doesn't make a great game. Well, I can go play something from CD Projekt Red. I can go play something from Yacht Club Games that is equally better and equally better or a lot better. But it is amazing to see that not only has that not really evolved in terms of the support side, but some of the contempt that has come out of 
video game publishers and companies over the last years. I mean, look at Konami and they're just, you know, utter disrespect for anyone who has supported them over the last several day years. Now, I want to preface that with the fact that they, they're a company. They're obviously there for business. And if they need to go to mobile in order to think that they're going to succeed as a company, then it's their prerogative to do that for their for their shareholders. Um, but the way they've gone about the customer service side with the whole PT handling and the Kojima handling, that's actually bad business for them too. Because not only is it hurting their public relations, you know, you've got assets in you know Castlevania, you've got assets in. The Silent Hill series. They like if you really needed to, you could sell it to someone, and somebody would pay top dollar for it. The Silent Hill series has a tremendous backing in terms of fans. Look at PT and that wonderful, you know, demo at that point, and how much hype that got. Hurting your business by not listening to the consumer, or at least you know, if you can't listen to the consumer, let somebody else listen for them. And you can, again, you can do well at that point, but. Am I going to be looking at Konami mobile games anytime soon? Hell no. I mean, not after the lack of respect that they had for the consumer. And they need to realize that. Even Nintendo, with all their problems in terms of like YouTube and the whole, you know, media situation at times, they understand that the consumer is what they need to focus on. And I give them credit for that. I give them credit for always focusing on making a product that people want to buy, as opposed to getting into some of the advertisement wars that other games had, like the whole Destiny advertising blitz that seemed to happen. Yeah, Nintendo advertises, yes they do, but never to the extent of Destiny, never to the extent of Halo 5. Um, they, there's a reason why I think Nintendo is going to survive in over time. It's because they listen to the consumer. It's worked for them for so long. Meanwhile, you have a game a company like Sega who never listened to their um, consumer base and gave them, you know, Sonic Generations. Sonic Generations, they, they put out there, and people, a lot of people loved it, and they got sales. It got reasonable sales, and yet they went a completely different direction. Why? Why are you not listening to your consumer base? Be inventive, try something new, but don't not listen to them because in the end, that's gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a huge problem. All right, this is my rant for now. Thank you guys for listening. There's a lot more first impressions and um, let's tries coming up in the, in the week. I am going to consider changing up a little bit of my schedule at this point um, just because I want to I've been thinking about doing some bigger pieces on this channel and over at Tech Raptor. I've actually considered maybe bringing myself entirely over to Tech Raptor. Um, some of the growth numbers I'm not happy with at this point. Um, I know this is getting completely off track at this point, but um, you know I got to consider this a business too. And I like, I mean, I love the fact that people watch on a consistent basis. I love the fact that you know I get so many good comments at times and. I, I thank everybody for that, but I got to consider, you know, okay, how do I really, you know, make this a career and, you know, sort of settle myself into a situation where I'm not worried for the future, but, you know, I do have time. I, again, I put a lot of, a bunch of money away to make sure this can work. So I'm just really throwing that out there in terms of thinking about that. Um, and again, I do want to do some larger pieces, you know, that really focus on, some aspects that people may not look on in the industry on. Um, I've been doing that a little bit more over at Tech Raptor, obviously, but it's something that, I, that I'm starting to come around to in terms of maybe I should be focusing on that a little more. I like my first impressions. I like my less tries. Don't get me wrong. That's not going away, but I'm just wondering about the quality, quantity at this point. Maybe focus on weekends on the bigger pieces. So, all right. I will see you all later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have a chance, leave some feedback and comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. This is Dragnik signing off, hoping that gaming brings as much fun to you as it does for me.